This problem walkthrough video will illustrate how to set up a linear optimization model complete with an objective function and constraints. Here's the data for our problem. Metal Manufacturers Inc. manufactures gas grill tanks model 1420 for four original equipment manufacturers or OEMs. Demand is forecast as shown below in the table. Due to a hedging program for sheet steel and increases in international tariffs, Production costs per quarter vary as shown in the table. Due to production contracts with OEMs, no shortages are allowed. Beginning inventory for quarter one is 350 tanks. At the end of each quarter, inventory holding costs are $4.90 per tank. Our requirement is to formulate this as a linear optimization model, but not to solve. Use a minus sign where appropriate, and if the constraint is one or minus one, enter one or negative one correspondingly. So let's proceed. First, let's define our variables. PI equals the number of units produced in each quarter I, and II is the inventory at the end of each quarter I. Next, we will state our objective function. With optimization problems, our objectives are typically to maximize something, i.e. profits, or minimize something, i.e. costs. Since our data provides us with only cost information and no sales or profit information, we can safely deduce that our objective is to minimize total costs. We have two categories of costs, production cost and inventory holding cost. So our objective function is to minimize 27P1 plus 32.2P2 plus 29.8P3 plus 33.4P4, where P1 through P4 are the units produced in quarters one through four. And then we continue with plus 4.9 I1, plus 4.9 I2, plus 4.9 I3 to represent the unit holding costs of 4.90 times the ending inventory in each of the quarters one through three. Since we're only focused on the first four quarters, we would not produce more than the units demanded, so it can be safely assumed that there would be no inventory at the end of quarter four, and therefore no need to calculate a holding cost. Next, we want to list our constraints. Since we know the demand, and to minimize costs, we don't want to produce more units than demanded over the entire four-quarter period, and we can include constraints for each quarter so the beginning inventory plus production less ending inventory equal the demand for each quarter. For quarter one, we want the beginning inventory of 350 units plus the units produced during quarter one, P1, less the ending inventory produced in quarter one, I1, to equal 3200. Our mathematical expression then is 350 plus 1P1 plus negative 1I1 because of how we were directed to express the constraints. For quarter two, we want the beginning inventory, which is the ending inventory for quarter one. So 1I1 plus the units produced during the quarter two or 1P2 less the ending inventory for quarter two plus one negative I2 equals 3,900. For quarter three, one I2 plus one P3 plus negative one I3 is equal to 4,100. For quarter four, one I3 plus one P4 plus negative one I4 is equal to 3,300. Finally, we cannot forget our non-negativity constraint where PT and IT are greater than or equal to zero for T equals one, two, three, and four. And that's our linear optimization model. Now, even though we weren't asked to solve the problem, let's go ahead and do it anyway and see what we get. Here, I've set up a model in Excel that looks like this. I have columns for the quarter and forecast demand as provided in the data along with inventory of 350 units. I have columns for production with no values because Excel would determine those. I also have columns with the unit production cost and unit holding costs also as provided in the problem. Next, we want to create a formula for ending inventory based on the general calculation, beginning inventory plus production minus demand. For quarter one, I'm making that calculation equal to the 350 beginning inventory plus production in cell C2 less demand in cell B2. You'll end up with negative 2,850 and that's okay for now. For quarter two in cell D3, take quarter one ending inventory plus Q2 production less Q2 demand and end up with negative 6750. For quarter three in cell D4, 
take quarter two ending inventory plus Q3 production less Q3 demand and end up with negative 10,850. For quarter four in cell D5, take quarter three ending inventory plus Q4 production less Q4 demand and end up with negative 14,150. Then I need a total production cost calculation for each quarter that's simply equal to the production from the cell in column C times the production cost in the applicable cell from column E. Then I need a total holding cost calculation for each quarter that's simply equal to the ending inventory from the cell in column D times the production cost in the applicable cell from column F. Next I have a quantity constraint column here that will serve as my quarterly constraints from our optimization model based on the formulas included there. So for Q1, 350 beginning plus Q1 production less Q1 equals 3200. For Q2, Q1 ending plus Q2 production minus Q3 ending equals 3900. For Q3, Q2 ending plus Q3 production less Q4 ending equals 4100. For Q4, Q3 ending plus Q3 production minus Q4 ending equals 3300. Finally, I just need a calculation for the total cost, which would be the source for my objective function. So here in cell B8, I simply add the total costs in columns G and H. Now I can set up the linear program in Excel by clicking on the data menu, then solver in the ribbon, assuming you have it installed. In the set objective field, click on it and delete anything that's already there and select cell B8. For the two part, click the button in front of min because we want to minimize the objective, which in this case is total cost. We want to minimize the total cost by changing the production quantities, so click on the by changing variable cells field and select the range for the production quantities, which is C2 colon C5 in my model. Next, we want to add the quarterly constraints to mimic what's in our manual function. So click the add button and then select the quantity constraint for Q1, which I have in cell I2 and select equals, and then enter 3200 as a constraint. And then press add to allow us to enter another one. I've clicked on my cell I3 for the Q3 quantity constraint and make it equal to 3900 and press add. Then select cell I4 for the Q3 constraint and set equal to 4100 and press add again. Then select cell I5 for the Q4 constraint and make it equal to 3300. Now press OK and you should see all the constraints. But we're not quite done yet because we need to make sure that our production values and inventory values are greater than or equal to zero. So click Add, then select the range for the production quantities, again C2 colon C5 in my model, and make them greater than or equal to zero, and press Add. And do the same for the inventory quantities, which for my model are in cells D2 colon D5, then press OK. To confirm non-negativity for the unconstrained variables, make sure to click the checkbox, and we want to use the simplex LP method, so choose that from the dropdown. Click on Solve, and you should get a result that looks like this. Select Keep Solver Solution, and let's see what we've got. What's interesting here is that Excel recommends we produce 6,750 units in quarter one to build up inventory in anticipation of the price increase in quarter two. We end up with inventory, but notice that the increase in the cost of $5.20 from quarter one to quarter two for production costs exceed the holding cost of $4.90, so it's actually less expensive to hold the inventory than pay a higher production cost. The model recommends no production in quarter two, and then 4,100 and 3,300 units in quarters three and four respectively for total costs of 433,760. You'll notice all of our constraints are held where production and inventory are greater or equal to zero and the quantity constraints are met as well. Total demand over the four quarters is 14,500 and that's equal to our beginning inventory of 350 plus production in quarters one, three, and four of 14,150, leaving us with zero in the inventory. So Excel has literally determined the optimal mathematical production quantity but it might not be quite realistic since there are implications of producing nothing for an entire quarter. Does this mean that the company should lay everyone off for three months? It's possible resources could be diverted elsewhere for a different product, but that's outside the scope of the data we're given. Nevertheless, we have confirmed that our linear optimization model does indeed work and do what it's supposed to do.